I, uh, I just finished this book um, that is a long letter from a girl in high school to a boy in high school, and it's called Why We Broke Up. <coughs> and it will be out next year, I think. On Valentine's Day. <laughs> and this is from that. It seems like a complication. Yeah. Um, I'm hard pressed to think of fiction that doesn't have complication in it. We can discuss that afterwards privately. <laughs> call me later, you'd said, so I can call you later at night, and it is those nights I miss you, Ed, the most on the phone, you beautiful bastard. Because the day, it was school. It was the bells too loud or rattly and broken speakers that would never get fixed. It was the bad floors squeaky and footprinted and the bang of lockers. It was writing my name in the upper right-hand corner of the paper or Mr. Nelson would automatically deduct five points and in the upper left-hand corner of the paper or Mr. Peters would deduct three. It was the pen just giving up midway and scratching invisible ink scars on the paper or suiciding a leak on my hand and trying to remember if I'd touched my face recently and am I a ballpoint <laughs> coal miner on my cheeks and chin. It was boys in a fight by the garbage cans for whatever reason, not my friends, not my crowd. My old locker partner crying about it on the bench I sat on freshman year with a gang I barely see anymore. Quizzes, pop quizzes, switching identities during attendance when there's a sub. <laughs> Anything in past time, more bells. It was the principal on the intercom, two whole minutes of ambient hum and shuffling, and they're very clear, that's on, Dave, and click the hum. <laughs> it was a table selling croissants for French Club, knocked over like by Billy Keeger, like always, and the strawberry jam was st sticky stain on the ground for three days before anyone cleaned it. Old trophies in a box, a plaque with this year's names waiting to be filled in on a tag, blank, and coffin-shaped. It was the deep daydream and waking up with the teacher wanting an answer and refusing to repeat the question. Another bell, the announcement, ignore that bell, and Nelson scowling, he said ignore it to people zipping backpacks. It was the paperwork and homeroom stapled together wrong so everyone has to rotate them and fill them out. It was the bullshit and the tryouts for the school play, the banners of the big game Friday and then the big banner stolen and the announcement to rat someone out if anyone knew anything. <laughs> It was Jen and Tim breaking up, Skyler getting his car taken away, the rumor that Angela was pregnant with them, the counter rumor, no, it's the flu, everyone throws up at the flu. It was the days the sun wasn't even trying to get out of the clouds, it'd be nice for once in its starry life. It was wet grass, damp hems, the wrong socks I forgot to throw out and so now found myself wearing, the sneaky leaf falling from my hair when it nested for hours to surely someone's delight. Serena getting her period and not having anything for it, like always. Scrounging from girls she didn't even know in the bathrooms during second. Big game Friday, go beavers, beat them beavers. The dirty joke's so boring to everyone but freshmen and Kyle Hapley. <laughs> <laughs> Choir tryouts, three girls selling knitting to help people in a hurricane. It was the library having nothing to offer no matter what you looking up. It was fifth period, sixth, seventh, clock watching and cheating on tests just because why not. I was suddenly being hungry, tired, hot, furious, so unbelievably startling sad. Fourth period, how could it only be fourth, is what it was. Hester Prim, Agamemnon, John Quincy Adams, distance times rate equals something, lowest common whatever, the radius, the metaphor, of the free market, someone's red sweater, someone's open folder, was wondering how someone could lose a shoe, just one shoe, and not see it when it was hopeful on the windowsill for weeks. <laughs> call this number on the bulletin board, call if you've been abused, if you want to kill yourself, if you want to go to Austria this summer with the other women. <laughs> it was strive in bad letters on a faded background, wet paint on the dry floor, big game Friday, we need your spirit, give us your spirit. Locker combinations, vending machines, hooking up, cutting class, the secrets of smoking and headphones and rum and a soda bottle with mints to cover the breath. That one sickly boy with thick glasses and an electronic wheelchair, thank God I'm not him. Or the neck brace, or the rash, or the orthodontics, or that drunk dad who showed up to a dance and hit her across the face. Or that poor creature who somebody needs to say to, you smell, fix it, or it will never, never, never will it get better for you. The days were all day, every day. Get a grade, take a note, put something on, put somebody down, cut open a frog and see if it's like this picture of a frog cut open. <laughs> but at night, the nights were you. 
Finally on the phone with you, Ed, my happy thing, the best part. The first time I called your house, it was like the first time anyone had called anyone. Alexander Graham what's it, frowning over his staticky attempts for months before finally managing to utter his magic sentence across the wire. <coughs> Do you know what it was, Ed? Hello? Damn it, it was her sister. Um, hi. Hi. Could I speak to Ed? May I ask who's calling? <laughs> Oh, why did she have to do that, is what I thought, picking at my bedspread. <laughs> a friend, I said, stupid shy. A friend? I closed my eyes. Yes. There was an empty, buzzy moment, and then, hold on, she said, and then a few secs, hum and clatter, your voice distant, saying, what? And Jones mocking, Ed, do you have any friends? Because this girl said, shut up, you said, very close, and then, hello? <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, hey, um, who, sorry, it's Min. Min, hey, I didn't recognize your voice. Yeah, hold on, I'm moving to another room because Joni's just standing here. Okay. <coughs> your sister's saying something, something, running water. They're my dishes, you said to her, something, something. She's a friend of mine, something, something. I don't know, something, nothing. I kept waiting. Watson is the first thing the inventor said, miraculously <laughs> from another room. Come here, I want to see you. Hey, sorry, it's okay. My sister, yeah. She's, well, you'll meet her, okay. So, um, how was practice? Fine, Glenn was kind of a dick, but that's usual. Oh, how was, what is it that you do after school? Coffee. Oh, with Al, you know, hanging out. Lauren was there too. Okay, how was it? And it was wonderful. To stutter through it or even stop stuttering and say nothing was so lucky and soft better than talk a mile a minute with anyone. After a few minutes, we'd stop rattling, we'd adjust, we'd settle in, and the conversation would speed into the night. Sometimes it was just laughing, or comparing your favorites, I love that flavor, that color's cool, that album sucks, I've never seen that show, she's awesome, he's an idiot, you must be kidding, no way, mine's better, safe and hilarious like tickling. Sometimes it was stories we told, taking turns and encouraging, it's not boring, it's okay, I heard you, I hear you, you don't have to say it, you can say it again. I've never told this to anyone, I won't tell anyone else. You told me that time with your grandfather in the lobby. I told you that time with my mother on the red light. You told me that time with your sister in the locked door. And I told that time with my old friend in the wrong ride. That time after the party, that time before the dance. The time at camp, on vacation, in the yard, <laughs> down the street, inside that room I'll never see again. The time with dad, that time on the bus, that other time with dad, that weird time at the place I already told you about the other story about that other time. <laughs> the times all linking up like snowflakes into a blizzard we made ourselves in a favorite winter. Ed, it was everything. Those nights on the phone. Everything we said until late became later and then later and very late and finally to go to bed with my ear warm and worn and red from holding the phone close, 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 so as not to miss a word of what it was because who cared how tired I was in the humdrum slave drive of our days without each other. I'd ruin any day, all my days, for those long nights with you, and I did. But that's why right there it was doomed. We couldn't have only the magic nights buzzing through the wires. We had to have the days, too, the bright and patient days spoiling everything with their unavoidable schedules, their mandatory times that didn't overlap, their loyal friends who don't get along no matter what promises are uttered past midnight. And that's why we broke up. Thank you. Wow.